My final guest tonight is a stand-up comedian with one of the most iconic voices in the country. Ian Sterling is a presenter, writer and stand-up comedian. After a BAFTA-winning stint in children's TV, he then became the instantly iconic voice of Love Island. Sometimes Molly May imagines Tommy in his boxing gloves. Sometimes Tommy pretends Molly May is an acoustic guitar. Since then, he's written a best-selling book, created his own sitcom. You barely learn the lines we give you. The scripts you write are so bland, they're barely worth learning. Fuck off, Ian. And now he's back on the road with his new tour, Failing Upwards. Please welcome the wonderful Ian Sterling! We Hello. still can't touch. We still can't touch. Do you know I was thinking that? Not because of COVID, because of the court case. <laughs> I was thinking... As I, was... I know where you live. Do you? You are not happy about it. That's you know, a joke. No, no, no but you, you know, you don't... No. <laughs> I would like to make it clear at this point that I've not been in front of an audience in about two years. But it's That's a what smooth happened start. There. I know. <laughs> I'm so like, sorry. Hello, everyone. I've sexually abused him. <laughs> and, and we're in and see, <laughs> see me on tour. Goodbye. <laughs> but I was, I was thinking that when, when, you were, when I was watching that kind of reel of you. Do you get that sort of thing where young people are going up to you now going, I used to watch you when I was little. Yeah, so I'll, I'll meet, like, a 22-year-old at, like, a festival. Yeah. If I'm performing at a festival, and then they'll be like... Oh, let, let's just say they've taken alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've taken a pill form of alcohol, yeah. <laughs> they've taken alcohol and they've got a very itchy tongue. Yes. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, my God, man! I used to watch you when I was at school. Yeah. You've changed so much. And I'm looking at this guy in, like, a bucket hat and, like, pants and nothing else, being like, I think we both moved on with our life. <laughs> <laughs> I liked you when I was six. And I still like you. It's just kind of... I like you when you were six and now you're old and scary. I get that quite a lot. Like, people be like, cos they'll see me do stand-up, I'm like, that's my childhood ruin. Oh, really? Right, of course. <laughs> I went from, like, um, hey, kids, let's look at birthday cards, to, like, I was wanking on this train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but here's the... Listen. But here's the... Right, I'd here's, like to make wait, it... Wait, no, wait, but... wait. What I was going to say, because you've hit upon a really sort of interesting facet of your life, because clearly... <laughs> but clearly, when you said you were wanking on a train... Yeah. ..you were joking. Yes. But because you're showbiz... Yes. ..big, massive, famous now... Mm -hmm. Presumably, like, all, all the tabloids are going, Ian Sterling wanks on train! <laughs> and they'll report it, like, not that it was on this TV show, they'll report it like they interviewed me in person. Yeah. <laughs> so they'll make it sound like I walked into a... This'll be in the news tomorrow. He said he used to look at children's birthday <laughs> cards and then wank on the train. <laughs> Something like... But does that... Is that sort of a... Is that something you think about now? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, to be serious, it's like one of the... Uh, it's like almost debilit debilitating it's, at, at points. Yeah. Like, I do worry about it all the time. And I worry about it not only for me, but, like, the people around me. Yeah. If I do jokes to people that are, like, close to me, that they're then going to have, like, a narrative. I used to joke about my parents, for example, all the time. And it would be, like, funny. Yeah. And my mum and dad would done mad stuff. Like, one year... I went home to surprise my mum and dad, and uh, I think this is why I love you, love your son up, because I think my mum and your mum would like really get along. Oh, really? Listen to this. <laughs> okay. I wait, went home wait. to see my mum and dad. They didn't know. Saturday night, I was had the time off gigging, so they didn't know I was coming round. Right. I get into the house. They are not on the sofa. They are on office chairs, facing away from the television. <laughs> I said, Mum and Dad, what are you doing? They <laughs> were watching uh, The Voice. I'm playing along at home. <laughs> so, we should talk about the uh, the sitcom as well, Buffering. Yes. Um, that was that was amazing. Were you pleased? Yeah, I'm like really proud. It's like the first thing I've like. 
it's the first thing outside stand-up that I've made, like myself, that I'm like, like incredibly proud of. Mm. That I can be like, look, I've done that, and just like give it to someone, mm. and not have to be like, well. And was it completely based on your own life? Because the character is called Ian. The character's called Ian, and he's a kids' TV presenter that hates kids. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate kids. Yeah. I just felt they were holding me back. <laughs> but you are back on tour. Yeah. Pretty exciting. So the tour's called Failing Upwards, that's right? Yeah, Failing Upwards because I'm basically, like, terrible at all things life-orientated. I can't, like, organise anything. Well, you say that, but look what you've done during the pandemic. Uh, you built a pub in your garden. Did do that. Uh, you wrote and starred in your own sitcom. Uh, you've got a book out, you've got a new stand-up tour, you had a baby, and uh, you've done lots of... Uh, dancing videos with your wife that have made... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so clearly... Nice... <laughs> nice to have her in, and... <laughs> but... But, so that doesn't sort of... Because I agree, whenever I see you, because I see you, we share an office, and I see you and you're normally very shabby, and your dog's... <laughs> but your dog's normally there and the dog looks fucked too. <laughs> and, <laughs> And, and, and you sort of, but you, they always look, but you both look like you've had a big night. And, and yet, you seem this to do all these me. things. But do you know what I mean? You seem to do all these things, but you always, whenever I see you, you're like, you right? And you look like you've slept in a hedge. But, <laughs> so, but somehow, you're kind of constantly, what's your secret, is what I'm asking. Um, having people around you that are, like, good at organising stuff. Right. My wife's quite good at that. Right. Um, I, like, I, like, I used to live on my own for ages. Yeah. To, that's why I'm like this, because you can't vet any of your thoughts or anything when you live on your own. <laughs> so I used to just go about with, like, a flat cap and, like, sh football shorts on. Yeah. Because the only person I was, like, checking in with was me. Yeah. <laughs> like, is this a bit weird that I'm dressed like this? And then my brain would be like, no, it's f I'd wear that as well. <laughs> Whereas now I go to my wife and my wife goes, no, it's inside clothes. Hang on, hang on a minute. So, so you literally dress yourself and then turn to, to your wife and say, huh? Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then she selects whether or not it's correct. No, absolutely not. That isn't what happens. That was one of those jokes. And again, that is another one of those things I my brain goes, there you go. warning, warning, that'll yeah. be in the... No, I think so. Some, you know what I mean? I'll sometimes maybe that's not, that shirt's not the right thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll bounce an idea off. I'm about to tell Russell Howard I'll wank on trains. Yeah. She'll go, that's maybe an inside thought. Yeah. <laughs> But it did strike me <laughs> that during the pandemic, you seemed busy, though. Did you keep yourself... You seemed like you were, like, playing, you know, FIFA on Twitch. Yeah. You were kind of, like, building a pub. I you, kept you... myself busy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were you, I... were you a Zoomer? Were you keeping him with your pals? I didn't Zoom. I've, I'm, I'm sort of in my 30s now, so I've not really got... Like, I've got... You, I think you'll know what I mean by this. I've not yeah. really got, like, friends. But I've got friends, if, but no, if there's like a thing to go to, I'll go to a thing. But if I was to phone my friend out of the blue and be like, hey man, how are you? He'd be like, what's happened? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Basically, I've, I think that like men, uh, put it this way, older men, I've got so few friends, they've had to like invent sports, haven't they? <laughs> like, think of it, like, five-a-side football was just a man in his 40s going, 22 people. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, like, you get to 50, it's like... Fuck it, tennis. Yeah. Let's get Steven. <laughs> then, like, 60, it's like, squash. I'll just, if Steve doesn't show up, I'll just bang it against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, uh, when, when does the new tour start? 14th of September. And you're, you're taping the special for, for Amazon, aren't you? Yeah. Is that... Where's that? Alexander Palace? Alexand Ali Pali. It's Alexander really cool. Palace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's amazing, right? Yes. Yeah, I didn't even know they'd done comedy there. I just remember, like, guys dressed as Smurfs. Screaming, 180! <laughs> oh, right, yeah, Jesus, yeah. I was... It's, it's I was like, a while then, I was like, yeah. I if you'd have just said the darts, I'd have gone, oh, I know what you mean, but you were like, guys, is that when you were on methamphetamine? What yeah. I definitely haven't quite got used to putting my, like, thoughts together yet. Mate, you're doing great. What are you talking about? Thanks, man. Now, you were described, I don't know if you know this, by GQ magazine as having a voice as iconic as Attenborough's. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> It's nice to be like, obviously, he's got, he's got the best voice, doesn't he? He's got a good voice, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be interested, because he's, you know, he's, he's getting on. <laughs> no, as in he's probably going to stop. 
doing his show at some stage. <laughs> I'm not suggesting we go out and kill him because <laughs> he's in the winter of existence. I'm saying, you know, he's, he's approaching the end of his career. Yeah. He might want to hang up the mic. Yeah. Would you take on that job? I reckon I, would, I could give it a go. Well, I'm so glad you said that because... <laughs> I'm going to play in a, some footage and I want you to do a voiceover. Now, I, I'm not going to say that you, you can only do it in the style of Love Island, but <laughs> that is the style you're used to, so don't be afraid if that's the way you do it. I think if I just started doing it in my normal voice, like I genuinely thought, I think I can replace Attenborough, yeah. that would be fucking mental. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll do, it full, I'll do it full Love Island. Let's play the clip. Here we go. OK. Welcome to Love Jungle. <laughs> The big lion approaches his lady friend. <laughs> He's hornier <laughs> than a group of antelope. <laughs> sniff, sniff. <laughs> and on he goes... <laughs> ..for... Seven seconds of absolute pleasure. <laughs> Pretty good. Right. It's... I think it could work. Uh, good luck with the tour. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, for the wonderful Ian Sterling!